Thank you. I assume this is the control remote for working, right? And here we are. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Ahmed Köse. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here. Uh, today, I will be talking about how AI is used in the commercial real estate and public buildings. But before starting, maybe a couple of words about myself as well. Well, I came to Estonia 10 years ago. I did my master and PhD degree in Tallinn University of Technology. At the same time, while I was doing the PhD, we have decided to launch the startup company, RA Technologies OU, and now here we are. So it has been a long journey and exciting. During the six years, we faced the COVID, we faced the energy crisis, and let's see what will come next. But uh, besides that, yes, uh, I'm taking care of the or let's say that I'm holding the position of the chief product officer, and actually it's not about me, it's a huge team. I will show you our uh, employees and who we are in the background in a minute. But besides that, I hope that uh, you will have a good understanding and you will have interesting questions for me. I know that uh, this is a general, but before jumping to AI, we need to understand the problem statement. So. Uh, I will try to give you as much as I can from the insights of the business, but at the same time, we should keep in mind that this is the business, this is the corporation. Uh, so I will try to keep the balance between revealing the information and keeping the business secrets. Uh, starting with that, the HVAC means heating, ventilation, air conditioning systems. And when we are looking at the energy consumption by the sector across the Europe, what we see here is around 40% of the energy consumption responsible from those buildings. So I am sure that every each of you heard about how we can be climate neutral, how we can be carbon neutral, how we can achieve our 30% reduction in X amount of the years. But do we know where it comes from? So here is a picture. And what we are talking about others, they are the lights, they are the plug loads as such, but the HVAC, all this when we feel cold, when we feel hot, when we feel lack of air, all these devices working behind us or above us, they are all consuming a lot of energy. And this is the, the, the area where we focus on expertise is. Just a side note that in Estonia is 53%. So majority of the energy consumed in Estonia is through the buildings. And then, in last, especially I would say last year and this year, everybody talks, okay, but how we tackle this problem? Starting from the energy side, they say that let's put the new windows, let's put uh, solar panels on the roof, let's put something else, just like, you know, let's cost more, let's do something more. I'm not saying that we shouldn't, we should, but also did we consider what is the current stats, current conditions of existing buildings? Do we see that everything is optimized, everything is running efficiently, or there is actually something we can do, but we haven't discovered the potential yet? So this is the, 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 the where the AI is coming to play. Optimizing the sub-processes, optimizing the, our current conditions or operations where we don't see or we somewhat neglect. And when we look at the, the order, eventually, in the business side, everybody looks at two things. What is the cost? What is the outcome? So when we look at the return on investment, I think that we will see the clear winner, or we can see the priority list. So once we are enough efficient with the first item, I think that the others shall follow. So another thing, what I'm going to say is you today, is not in Estonia only, is uh, everywhere, wherever we go, visit is the same. There are two main problems. The first problem, uh, cost. Everything costs. Sometimes it costs less or more, but it costs. High cost or a bit less cost, but still cost. Other one is the us, tenants, occupants, people. Right now we are here in Epike or Mainula Miste. We are the ones that who are complaining to the, the people, technical people saying that I feel cold or you feel hot or I feel something different, I can't describe even. So then, then the people should take care of those issues. If they don't care on time, then, then you will complain even louder, and they have to take care again. So those people are all the time with the fire, 
And there is nothing that we can blame them, because let's imagine this is the building, uh, 13 floors, let's say. And how many people are here? And how many people actually can be satisfied at the same time? I'm saying that I'm from the South Europe, and then the, somebody else says I'm from North Europe. My understanding of the temperature, my understanding of the feelings can be different. Even though we are sharing the open office, we can both complain at the same time with the different directions. So <laughs> it's a bit of the, the challenge, isn't it? And then what we are saying is that we can optimize, we can maximize the, the current problem or the solution itself. So our idea here is that let's give ability to the facility managers who is responsible for this building, who is at the same time responsible for your comfort to decide what is their feeling, what is their know-how, what is their experience in this building with you guys or with us, and let them basically decide what is the, 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 their driver uh, in these operations. And we need to achieve this curve all the time. So this is the huge problem. Why? The first thing is about the prices. The second thing is about weather conditions. The third thing is about occupancy. Now everybody is remotely or not, never know. But there are like lots of indicators here. That's why there is a huge need or it has been a huge need of AI in this business. It was the problem statement, David, onboarding you. Uh, what is the case that is about? And now I would like to introduce our company, who we are and where we are at, st at this moment. We are the company launched in 2017, and locals, or maybe most of you know, our first client is the Viri Shopping, Viri Shopping Center. And then the, the, we started from there, and now we are at the moment uh, across to Europe. So uh, the company itself, uh, 50, more than 50 people. Um, our HQ is here, right here behind you, another building in the Lemister City. But the, 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 what is important to mention, let's forget about the stats, but let's look at the diversity. If we want to see that AI is successfully used, utilized, we cannot be just a data scientist. We cannot just be machine learning engineers or whatsoever. We need to understand at the same time the business operations, expectations, outcome as well. Myself, I, I was so like, happy to do a lot of uh, playing around, pre-processing, post-processing, doing some uh, supervised learnings, using the artificial networks, doing some publications. But when we jump to the business, they say, guys, speak to me another language. I don't understand you. Show me the results, like what you have done. <laughs> I don't mind, like what is your accuracy or your F score here. So it has been like a little bit different, and it was a very good learning curve for me as well to know who is the facility manager, the, the engineers, the mechanical engineers, the civil engineers at the same time, and also the data scientists, AI experts, however you name them. They all need to sit together and do these operations together. Then we can call it the success story. So just giving this a bit of fact that uh, right now we are around 3 million meters square uh, serving with the AI. So AI is already rich to the 3 million meters square. So I would say that this uh, building should be around 15,000, so you, you can just uh, make, make the math how many buildings we are talking here in average. And yeah, uh, right now we are in 18 countries. So let's imagine AI is working in Norway, in Oslo, in Helsinki or Stockholm, the same time in Lisbon and Barcelona, and it, as well as also in Paris. So the AI should be enough scalable that everybody enjoys it, not for only Estonians, but for all the world. Uh, another thing is important. Let's for, maybe you know some of the names, but the names are just here secondary in this uh, content. The important thing is that we, when we go to shopping mall, we have different mindset, different motivation of understanding. When we are going to coming to office buildings, we have different uh, wishes. And when we go to hotel, we just want to have a leisure, at least most of the time. And then the public buildings, when we go to school, we want to learn and we have different, uh, uh, again, like uh, the mindset, what we are going to do. And imagine AI should benefit or AI should serve for all these kind of types, which means that there is a totally different understanding, means this totally different uh, the automation system or construction itself, how single AI solution can help all. So this is the, the, the one of the biggest problem, what we have solved and still doing it. 
And then the another thing is just said that also a uh, previous speaker was mentioning that the AI should be using what is available. So I'm not talking about that we have some sort of a box of the hardware or controller we just distributed. We expect that the, the technical or maintenance company will do the installation and will start using the AI. They will say, probably we will say, it's a black, black box AI, don't touch it. It will do the best job, don't worry about it. And they will say, no, thanks, we don't want to use it. So, but the reality is that more, hey guys, you are the one that actually decides how the AI should be utilized. Give AI some goals, some motivation, or some sort of a limits, and then let AI do the job, but you are always in the supervisory or a higher, superior position. So this is like the operations are working as of today. Anyways, so let's take a look where we are using the AI, in what segments. The first thing is about the, the, the transparency for owners and managers, they benefit from the AI, from the, the, the increasing real estate value, as well as the, the maybe I've heard about ESG keyword, that they also use AI. Environment, reducing the CO2 emissions is important, as well as the systems, if they are optimized well, if they are controlled and, and they're driven well, their lifespan will be longer. Is, let's imagine it's the cars, mechanical cars. If you don't bring the maintenance, if you are not driving in a proper way, then of course, like it will be a cycle will be much less, like as simple as that. And then the, about the, the indoor climate comfort, I will just touch it in a moment as well as the, the lower bills. So especially last year, we have seen, any of you remember that what was the 17 August uh, at 6 p.m., the, the electricity price in Estonia? August 17, 6 p.m. Nobody? 4, Here we are, right answer. <laughs> Who wants to pay 4,000 euro per megawatt? Looks like nobody, <laughs> but it was. <laughs> And who, what we have done? Actually, we have done a great job, but uh, this is another topic perhaps for the presentation. Uh, another story is about uh, the ener energy security. Sooner or later, uh, this issue will be raising soon. There is no escape from there. Because uh, we are saying that let's put uh, the solar parks, let's put the wind turbines, let's put the renewable energy, but who is keeping the balance? Maybe I've heard, maybe some of us here are also engineering background, 50 hertz, if it's going below or above with DC, we are in trouble. And somebody at the grid or the SO, TSO, how much you know the terms, they should take care of the balance. While we are sleeping, they are also taking care of the balance. While we are in vacation, in Christmas holidays, they take care of the balance. And we might end up in the any moment shortage because of this imbalance problems. And we need to take care of it. This is the how AI is used. But let's come to the main role of the AI for us. The important thing is that we need to take into account all the parameters, all the inputs at the same time. And then the, the, for us, the important thing is that every 15 minutes, data is collected. So from 9 to 5, the technician might work here on the weekdays. What about the weekend? What about night time? How do we know that everything is in the building is OK? We don't know it. And uh, the, that's important to have a 15 minutes uh, reading intervals and then hold the data in proper way. But to, to enable the AI, what we need is a digital twin first. So without digital twin, how are we going to make AI? We can have a offline algorithms, getting some data, sample data, or the, the, some data from our laboratory, but how we can see that actual outcome? So to do that, we need to create a digital twin at first. The second thing is about to get to know the actual site. This is the building. Do we know like what has been the, the problems, anomalies, issues? findings, etc. Like we need, to get, we need to get to know the building or facility itself. Doesn't matter actually this building or not. Any problem statement, we need to know what's happening in the site. And then the third thing, our main value or the most valuable item is the control, AI powered control. I will just show it in a moment, in a moment how this works. And again, like we talk about without investment and using the, the, the existing infrastructure in the best, most efficient way. And another example of the, the how AI is working. Can we imagine that we are doing one and a half million adjustments, doing some change with the temperatures, with the air volumes, everything else ourselves? This is the place where AI is working at most, doing the, the, the micro adjustments, continuous changes, 24-7 for us 
And this is the main role of the AI for us as of today. Okay, now I show you one example of the indoor climate. Every dot or the, here the, the point represents a sample of the temperature sensor for, let's say, for one week. Let's imagine that this is our input. And then somebody is saying that what is good and what is bad for them. Do you see the complexity? If we are in this building, we are talking about thousands of thousands of the sensor readings, and we need to do assessment. Eventually, our main goal is to maximize the green area. I think traffic light concept is familiar for everybody. Green means good, red is bad. But why is bad? Is it because of our AI? or because of the, the, there is no capabilities of the building. Doesn't matter how great score we achieve, outcome is as it is. So another question that we need to face. And then again, when we come to the topic, occupancy. Right now we have a conference, but probably there wasn't anything yesterday. Another thing about the, the weekdays or weekends, some guys like to come to the office even on weekends. Or when we talk about the, the, the weather, right now the, tomorrow it will be two degrees nighttime, and then two days ago it was 20 degrees. How we are taking care of this, all these oscillations or the vari variations in the weather side? Are we ready? We are changing the clothes, but how about the buildings? Another problem. As such, and now let's take a look at action. What AI is doing in just one day? The first thing is about AI is doing that uh, the, based on the inputs, based on the goals, doing some sort of a pre-cooling, pre-heating, just starting the day. And why is doing it? Because of knowing the inertia, knowing the building dynamics, knowing the, the goals, knowing the inputs, and knowing how much eventually you need to cool down or heat up the building before people come to the site and they will feel fine. This is the, the role of AI for us at first stage. And the second thing is that if you know how the electric prices are today, Mostly in morning and evening times, the prices are getting higher and daytime is a bit lower. But again, nobody wants to consume energy while the energy prices are really high. And then, then they expect us to reduce it. And then what we see here is that now it's cheap because of the why the sun just came. In Estonia, we all know that weather might change any moment. <laughs> and this is also like not about Estonia, this is across the anywhere is the same, like the weather is very tricky. And then 4,000 euro came, let's say, what we need to do. They say, we don't care about indoor climate anymore. Let's turn off everything possible. And then we are coming back to again another normal life. And imagine that this is that much dynamics inside, and then the AI should basically proactively make decisions, do the executions, and align with the, the human operators. And this is the, the actual work of the AI for us today. But again, I'm coming back to the point, reports. When I show you all this, uh, the actions and stuff, probably the building owner will say, please, I don't understand what they're talking. I don't have time for you. Can you please summarize me? Can you tell me enough, simple enough, what you have done? Show me the outcome. I believe that you have the best AI in the world, but show me the outcome, what AI is capable of in practice. And this is the thing that we need to get well. If you say that, hey, according to our reports, our pie charts scatters all the plots, we are doing a great job. What is the second question? I don't trust you. Prove it. <laughs> and then you need to get with the international standards and then get the alignments, etc. And then they show that, yes, we are validated by third party. We are proven. The, the, some other audit came company or the university checked how the calculations are made. Everything is in order. We also made a data cleaning. We checked anomalies. We checked your meter data and everything, everything. So then they say, okay, now it's good. Now I believe in you. And then somewhere in short, so that uh, every building, every owner, every portfolio managers have different understanding. Some of them will say, hey, my number, goal, number one goal is uh, sustainability. I want to be sustainable. Other one will say, I want to reduce my cost. I want to reduce my basic expenses for my tenants because I want to increase the rent. Okay, fine, I don't mind. Another one will say, hey, you know what? We have lots of complaints in this building. Can you do something? The fourth one will say, I don't trust my construction guys. Can you please check that all the HVAC system, all the mechanical systems are made properly? And then I want you to be validated. Just number of examples I'm throwing here right now just comes to my mind as a common practice. 
but the, the, there are like lots of, of them. And now I've been talking a lot. Let's see very concrete case studies. I will show you today two of them. The first one is right here in Ulemiste city. Uh, we have lots of case studies, but I just want to brought out uh, this one especially. So let's take a look around for a second. What we have here, starting from left side, the airport, and then where we are in the office buildings. What we have next, the shopping mall. And maybe some of you remember, at least the locals, Ilemiste Keskus was, Ilemiste Shopping Center was built in 2004. Then 2014, they extended. And 2019, extended again. But still the same shopping mall. But how they made it? With different automation system, different sensor understanding, and different utilities. Now there's a trampoline or like kind of a, let's say that uh, some activities around, and then there's a gym, etc. And then the other side is a restaurant. And previously it was only shopping areas. Like how AI can be handled or how AI can be useful for such kind of asset, but it is. And then when we are looking at the automation system, maybe you know you have heard of this, but it's Siemens or Schneider or something else. They're all different architecture. They have different understanding of automation side. And the AI should be enough good to align, to cooperate with each automation system what is on site. This is the, 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 the importance of AI. I can't say to the, the Guido partners that, sorry, I can just take care of one third of your building, two thirds can somebody will handle. No way. Then they will say, we are looking for the partner that takes care as a full service, as an example. Or right now we are in Minor Lemister, another. This is like a here in this building and then the twin building is different automation system. Nobody knows about it, I think, here, but it's the case. Because well, it might be different motivations behind, but still is the case. As a service provider, as a technology provider, you can't change the fact. And regardless of all the story, I think numbers are talking themselves, self-explanatory. And we didn't install anything on site. We didn't do anything like, hey, now we need to install like a half million euro sensors to make it better, or let's upgrade the automation system to the, with another 200K, et cetera. And just like annual results of the, the, the AI-based control and solution together with the local partners, of course, one and a half million euro, not bad. And then adjustments paid by the AI is around 1.2 million. So in this region, Ilemiste city, AI was doing 1.2 million changes in the system, mechanical system, to make it happen. So this is the role of AI for us. And now, maybe we can just jo j jump to the next case, is this building. What we see here, <clears throat> the building itself, I think the Ursel Vev is the CEO of the Minor Lemiste, was also giving the, the quotation, what is the feedback about it? So when we look at the, the BMS, it's Schneider, but uh, as I mentioned, there are two kinds. And then there are also some new, some of them are new built, some of them are renovated as such. And then what we see here is the indoor climate. Do you see that? Indoor climate is following some line, and then the AI should make sure that it is close to the facility managers or building managers' expectations. The green line is the target. This is the target for AI, let's optimize. And at the same time, we are looking at the air quality. So you cannot say that, hey, we need to reduce now the uh, ventilation machines, air volumes, because we want to make money. No way. If you do it, then, 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 then sooner or later it will come out and they will say, uh, we, are able to, we are going to terminate the contract with you. So you don't know what you are doing. That's the thing that you need to make sure that uh, you have a clear establishment with the, 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 the understanding of the, the mechanical systems, understanding of the building operations, and understanding of the, the, the indoor climate and then the AI. And uh, by the final words, what we see here is that, again, the, some remarkable number of the, the savings. What we see here is that trees saved, I didn't mention so far, but <laughs> reduction of the CO2 and then, then the, the saving our trees is our number one goal in the end of the day, because there is only one word. There is no plan B or there is no plan B word whatsoever. We can't go anywhere else. Whatever happens, we will be still living here. And of course, about the, the, the reduction of the energy. And also in this building, we are doing this uh, demand response service as well. Then we are helping the editing grid operator as well. So everything at once, AI is taking care 
of course, with the full support of the huge team, with the full support of the local partners, and the full support of my Remista. So what I'm saying here today, AI is a great opportunity, but at the same time, AI should be aligning well with the reality. And I think that summarizes my presentation. Thank you for your attention, and I don't know if you have questions, time or not. Thank you very much. Do we have questions from the audience now? I don't think uh, many were put to slide. Oh, we have quite a few. Let's uh, get the microphone to that gentleman over there first. Great solution. Love the dork. Amazing. Um, I wanted to ask, you mentioned that there supposedly are no requirements for the solution to actually work, but as you mentioned in the specifics, there are thousands of data points and specific sensors. So I wanted to actually ask about older buildings, since these are new ones. So what would be the specific requirements for those sensors to actually be usable without needing to adjust specific sensors for your solution to actually work? Well, uh, as for your question, thank you for the question, by the way. Uh, we have a clientele. Uh, uh, how is it? Pax Margarita. Pax Margarita? <laughs> it's <laughs> an old building. Yeah, Pax it's a Margaret. Yeah. The, the, the building is it from the, the Middle Ages, is also our client, which was built, if I'm not mistaken, in the 16th century. And About also that time. So, yeah. And then at the same time, that the fresh built 2023 building is also our client. So what I'm saying is that it has to do a lot with the automation system insights, what is renovation means for them, and how it is built. So, but in the general, we are just drawing a line that, hey, any building is either constructed, built, renovated in the last 10 years, 99% is good fit for us. But of course, such solution requires some controllable device on site. If there is no internet, sorry, we can't control. If there is no automation system or there is nothing that I can change, uh, I cannot do it. It's kind of, in simple words, self-driving car. If there is no kind of a <laughs> pedal or whatsoever that uh, the actual self-driving car can have a sensor of feedback or whatsoever, how it will drive? Uh, the, the buildings are the same in the end of the day. A few more questions, a few more hands I saw before. So uh, maybe we can, ah, oh, that gentleman over there. Hello, Ahmed. Thanks for a nice presentation and good job. And my question is about like this. Uh, as you said, each building has different uh, characteristics and features. And like in, in one building, you can have one type of sensor. In another building, different sensors. For example, CO2, temperature, another one, different sensor, different data. Whole single model can handle it. Or do you have a specific approach for each of your client and specific model for each of your client and each building? Uh, another good question. So I'm just thinking how much to reveal <laughs> about how we are doing things. Uh, let's put it this way. Uh, we do have a generic approach for every single building, and we do have a configuration based on the client's expectations. But at the same time, we have plenty of know-how how to approach every single client in different region, different automation type, etc. So again, when you look at only from the control side, oh, this is just like, I know that this is artificial neural networks or this is some decision tree, random forest, whatever. Oh, you are using, I know about it. Yes, but this is just a one piece of the big picture or the puzzle. So the whole point is that, how do you connect with the Siemens uh, automation system? How do you connect with the Federic, Sauter, I don't know, Honeywell, whatsoever. Even like uh, now uh, we are going to, 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 to Asia as well, like different automation systems. So. This is another know-how. And the third one is, of course, about the understanding what the building operations or building managers are expecting from you. If they are saying that control every single controllable set point from this building, then you need to approach differently. They will say, I want to just control partially, but control please the, the, the circuits only, is another story. So all this kind of the, the, the matrix, I would say that we join together. That's why the client retention or client relation is very important for us. Thank you very much. And the last minute to answer the question, and the question is yes and no. from that gentleman over there. <laughs> uh, hi, thank you for the, your lecture. Um, I have a question regarding the smart buildings. If you do, for example, my question is, do, would you think it would be a good investment to make a building that, is, um, that changes with the seasons, changes with the climate? Like, for example, by using eolic energy and solar energy, um, would that be applicable and would that have value, create value and uh, would be a, that a good idea? 
or not? Uh, the, the ultimate goal for thank you for the question. Ultimate goal for the the, the building owners or managers is the minimizing the energy purchase. And if there is a, some sort of solar panels on site, the idea should be that how we can maximize the usage of this uh, renewable energy generated on site for the consumers in the same building. So that what we do minimize the transmission cost, we minimize the purchase or energy, basically the buying from the whoever is selling. And then this is a great opportunity. Thank you very much, Ahmed. Uh, an applause, ladies and gentlemen.